Hey, Pat and Chris back for another episode of Shop Talk where we're diving deeper on the all new Ranger XD 1500. So Chris, what are we covering off on today's episode? Today, we are gonna be focused on the unprecedented capability of the Ranger XD 1500. Yeah, and guys, I think when we're talking capability, right, what are we gonna go through? We're gonna be going through some of the specs, some of the features, what this thing's really capable of doing. We're gonna dive deep on this all new three cylinder engine. And then I think we're, you know, we're also gonna be able to show you, you know, a lot of the things that this machine can do, at least from a shop environment. But let's start out talking on some of the exterior and dimensions. All right, so as we talked about in episode one, this is the most capable UTV ever made. It's got a three quarter ton dump box and it can tow an additional thousand pounds over any full size UTV out there today. Now, what we wanna spend some time talking about is the fact that this vehicle, while it is a lot more capable than most UTVs, is not as big as it might sound. So as you look at this vehicle, especially in this view, the major difference in terms of dimensions versus most UTVs today is that we made the XD line of vehicles longer. About half of that long length in an extra foot goes into the cargo box. The other half goes into the interior cab dimensions, which we'll show you guys a little bit more. But as you think about the width of the vehicle, as well as the height of the vehicle, they're actually very similar to full-size UTVs today. Do you think about the width? It's the exact same as an XP1000, despite the fact that the body on the front and rear is a little bit wider and you get a little bit wider cargo box. And we do that with these flush doors. So you'll notice that the doors don't stick out on this vehicle like they do on a lot of others. And that's because we designed the XD series of vehicles to have doors on them most of the time versus doors being something that you add as an additional feature later on. The other thing you'll notice is that the height is very similar to an XP1000. What we have to point out on this vehicle though is we put some massive accessory Pro Armor tires on it. So this is sitting on 32 inch tires, um, which you can do to jack your vehicle up a little bit. Uh, but in standard uh, stock orientation, this vehicle is really not much taller than an XP1000. So your height, your width, very similar. The added capability and the added comfort really come in the length of the vehicle. Last thing I'll show you related to dimensions is just how that applies to the interior of the cab. So I mentioned that the vehicle isn't much taller, but it is longer. We've stretched out the inside of this, air, this seating area so that you've got more leg room. We also lowered the seat height relative to the floor. So if you look at this seat height, it's pretty high, but it is about the exact same as an XP1000, even though this vehicle's jacked up a little bit. Makes it really easy to get in and out of the vehicle. Um, and as you can see, I've got a lot of leg room here because we stretched out this section of the interior. Pat, you got some leg room back there Dude, too. Dude, I got plenty of room. My knees aren't even touching your seat and I can still tell you to go faster or slow yep, down. So yep. yeah, no problem. So plenty, plenty of, room of room in the front and the back seat. Obviously, that's gonna give more leg room for tall people like Pat. I think you're over six foot. Yeah, six, six, one, yep. The other thing though, is it's gonna make this vehicle more comfortable for shorter riders as well. Um, by having this seat height lower and being able to adjust the driver's seat forward, this vehicle is gonna fit shorter riders um, better than the rest of our Ranger lineup. Um, it'd be a really good ergonomic fit, whether you're average size or you're really small or, or quite a bit bigger. So overall, way more comfortable and that comes out from the chassis. The next thing that I'll show you guys is on the front of the vehicle. And this is pretty cool stuff. It's really similar to what we do on the rest of our Ranger lineup, but a lot of the same features that you guys are used to and you love are gonna come on this bumper. So first thing is like you guys are used to, massive bumper on this vehicle. We've got some of the same features that you expect on any Ranger, um, the first being integrated winch and winch mounting. This vehicle comes from the factory with a winch, as well as our um, Polaris engineered plow uh, mount that's integrated directly into the bumper. So just like on an XP1000 or the rest of our lineup, um, we offer up to 84 inch plow kits for this vehicle and they're super easy to put on. You just roll the plow right up to your machine, hook it onto these bars, integrate into your plow catch here, hook up the winch, you're good to go. And we also offer hydraulics kits for this vehicle, just like we do on the full size lineup. Some cool stuff that we've added to this vehicle though is, not only is this bumper a little bit cooler looking, a little bit uh, higher style, we also added some cool functional features. So we've got D-rings on the front of these vehicles that come standard on your Northstar Ultimate machines. 
We also have these accent lights that light up on um, certain trims and that you can add as accessory. And that's not the only light that comes additional on this vehicle, so we'll walk you guys through those in just a second. Um, so awesome new bumper, a bunch of really cool accessory integrations. Um, we've got an upper protection feature here as well, and we also offer the um, front hood cargo racks, so you can really get this thing decked out, um, full of protection and storage features. But really cool, stylish, modular bumper, bunch of cool features added to it. Now I think we got Pat in the driver's seat here, and what I want to show off is just all the cool lighting that you get on this vehicle. Uh, we spend a lot of time talking to you guys, the customers, and the one thing that it seems like there's never enough of is lights. Uh, you guys, seems like you want to have every single angle around the vehicle lit up, and a lot of you are working really early mornings, late nights, so, I mean, we delivered. We just put a ton of lighting on this thing. The first one that we'll show you is we've had these accent lights powered on the whole time. There we go. So those can go on and off. And then, Pat, why don't you show them some high beams as well? Well, there's low. There's high. Yeah. <laughs> so super bright, really stylish LED headlights. This is kind of mm -hmm. what you guys expect from Ranger at this point. We put awesome LED headlights on everything. Uh, but we also added these accent lights in the bumper. Let's see if Pat can hit the right switch. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so check those out. Um, we really like these. So the first function of them is that they look cool. That's primary function number one. <laughs> uh, but the second thing that these lights do that we actually think is a really big benefit is when you're plowing, you can get a little bit more peripheral lighting and it can light up some of those dark spots. So really nice feature when you're plowing on the machine as well. Um, just like all the rest of our Rangers, you can add a light bar up top. This one's got a rigid light bar mounted up to the top. It's super bright, so I'm gonna have to put on some sunglasses. Yeah, or something. you look away when I flip Pat this. Pat turns this one on. <laughs> so plenty of light output, but just a huge light bar, like you guys are used to. The other one, light-wise, you know, we've also got you know the sweet uh, interior dome light here that really lights up the cab pretty well. On our North Star models, we also include a rear bed light, and you can set this up so that it comes on when you put your vehicle in reverse, or else you can set it up so you just turn it on and off when you want to. Again, this one's really nice for plowing, especially if you're turning around a lot in your driveway, but all that extra light is really nice going in reverse. It's also nice if you're you know, working on a project or doing something on your tailgate, you can get some extra light at night to light things up. Um, so another really cool feature. The other feature that's kind of hidden but is also pretty cool is we added some puddle lighting. So there's some little blue lights that show up in the bottom of the door here as well as um, shining down on your feet in the cab. And those are super dim lights, so they're not really gonna show up in this um, daylight environment, but it's really nice so you have just a little bit of night vision to be able to see stuff that's down by your feet or to be able to see things as you're getting in the vehicle. Um, we actually tune this level of brightness, so we'll try a bunch of different things. I'll show up to work late at night and uh, make sure that we get that light just right so that it's not blinding you while you drive, but it's just enough light that you can see a little bit um, you know, where things are at. So lots of really functional, thought out lighting on this vehicle. Um, some of it comes from the factory, some of it you can add as an accessory, but we really went tip to tail on this vehicle and made sure that we were lighting everything up because we know that's super important to Ranger owners. So one of the other things you guys couldn't see while you were, you know, camera was up front. Uh, from the driver's seat, what you'll notice is that when the headlights are on, you'll see that the seven inch display is nice and bright, center stacks lit up, the gauges behind the steering wheel are nice and bright. But when I take this headlight knob and I turn it to the off position, everything dims down so it's not so bright. I go to night mode on the seven inch, I dim down the display and even the center stack gets dimmer. All right, so we showed you guys the exterior of this vehicle. We talked about a lot of the capability of this machine, but I mean, this is shop talk, right? <laughs> Where are the engine cutaways? Where's all the detail? Well, guess what? We got an engine right here. Not a loud creaky car. I think I kind of snuck in on that one, but this, this all new engine has actually got a whole bunch of crazy awesome features that are really tailored to this all new Ranger. Um, I think one of the first things that you guys are gonna notice on the screen is the angle that this engine actually sits at. So if you look, the top of the engine is almost pointed toward me, right? And normally on most of our vehicles, that would be sticking straight up. Well, in order to drop the bed height down, this engine actually got laid down at quite a steep angle. Uh, and we had to do some trick things in the oiling system to be able to compensate for that. But you know, to use an operator, it makes for a nice low bed height um, to be able to get things in and out of that cargo box. 
Um, standard ProStar style here, right? We've got a dual overhead cam motor, uh, direct actuating, much like you've seen on a lot of our other engines. Uh, it's 500 cc's per cylinder, so this is a, a liter and a half motor. Um, we share some design uh, with actually the, the Pro R engine from a cylinder size. A lot of the bottom end components are actually very similar between Conrad's and some of the main bearings. Um, chain driven cam, the other things you see up here in the front, uh, accessory belt drive. So, you know, crankshaft is here, the alternator pulley is up here at the top. Uh, on this North Star engine, the AC compressor is here. And then these two guys are idler pulleys. So there's no, no tensioner actually on this. It's a, a stretchy belt, much like we've had on some other engines. And when you have a model that doesn't have air conditioning, then you just have the main pulley and the alternator pulley with a belt going between them. The AC compressor and these two idler pulleys would actually go away in that configuration. So it's, it's pretty trick in that regard. The other thing that you don't see here is there's actually a duct that comes up and the fan off this alternator actually draws air in and helps cool everything in this system since this front of the engine actually faces the back of the vehicle kind of towards the exhaust. Um, so I'm gonna spin this motor around a little bit just so you guys can kind of see, see what I'm looking at. We'll maybe stop halfway here. Um, so we've got coil on plug technology. So ignition coils are mounted right on the top of the engine. Um, you've seen that from us before. But we've actually moved to an iridium tip spark plug. So hopefully you can get zoomed way in on there. And the cool thing about these plugs is that it's got an iridium core um, and it's also got, I think, a platinum uh, piece on the uh, end of the uh, ground strap here. So this plug gives you massive longevity in this engine. So you don't really have to worry about swapping plugs. These things last a hell of a long time in this application. Um, standard one injector per cylinder. Um, as we rotate this around a little bit more, um, you'll actually see that these intake manifold up on top has got these huge long runners to it. And this was actually done to drive low end torque for this Ranger, this utility application. So still a single bore throttle body on this one, but these really long runners allow us to build torque down low. Uh, so it's a really nice application in that regard. The other thing you see out of the back of this engine, uh, for anybody that's watched any of our Pro R content, uh, we've actually got a damper that goes between the engine and the transmission, and that's mounted right here on the flywheel. Um, so inside this thing, there's basically some springs and some grease that take up some of the harmonics of the engine. So pretty cool technology here as well. Um, up on the top, you can see we've got a sealed starter on this one. So that is, is similar to other Ranger engines that we've had in the past. Um, you can see it's basically got a gear train that comes down to this guy. Um, that goes down to a balance shaft here that goes across the motor and that actually drives uh, with a chain, the oil pump and uh, water pump on the other side. Now I'm gonna keep spinning this motor around. <laughs> Hopefully I don't run into anything here. I think you're um, good. But there's some really trick stuff in the oiling system that's kind of cool here. So if you get the camera in close, you'll see that there's actually an oil pickup on this side through this hole in the cutout, kind of down low. It's that black bit down there. But you'll also see that there's a hose that's coming out here on the top, okay? This hose is actually coming off the pickup that's on the other side of the oil pan. So if we can spin around a little more here, you might be able to get the camera in. So you see this pickup on this side and the oil pan itself basically has a wall in the back there. So the pan is actually separated front to back so that we can get extreme angularity on this. So when you're going up and down hills, you don't have to worry about starving the engine. So we actually draw oil from this side, shoot it over to the other side and use that to make sure it's always staying full to be able to keep the motor uh, fed with oil. And from a capacity perspective, this thing holds more oil than any Ranger we've ever had. Um, I think fluid and filter uh, combined, it's something like four and a quarter quarts. Um, so you get longer uh, engine oil change life out of this. So it's 2,000 miles or 2,000 hours. So it's basically double what previous gen Rangers have been. Um, other things that are nice from a longevity and, and the fact that you don't have to do maintenance. Um, if you look through this little pocket here, it's got a hydraulic chain tensioner for the cam chain. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. It just ratchets out over time and takes up any slop in the cam chain. Um, so overall, there is a ton of awesome technology in this all new engine. Um, I guess, Chris, I've been doing all the talking. You got any questions about this? Because this is, this is maybe you know, new for a lot of people here. Yeah, and this is definitely not my area of expertise, so I'm glad I have Pat here to <laughs> explain all the details. You mentioned this being a ProStar engine, really mm -hmm. um, being grown from that lineage of ProStar engines, and then yeah. also the new uh, ProR that we launched. So yeah. can you talk about 
This obviously is brand new for Ranger, but mm -hmm. this isn't an all new design. It's not from the ground up. You know, what are some of the best practices that we've learned from the other engine programs we've worked on yeah. that led to the development of this three cylinder? Yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, some of the cool things that you see are, you know, dual overhead cam technology, you know, four valves per cylinder, you know, injector per, per cylinder, a lot of those classic ProStar tenants, right? Um, other things, I guess, that I maybe didn't mention um, that exist on this engine, it does have a knock sensor. Now, this thing's made for 87 octane fuel, so you don't have to run, you know, premium grade gas, just regular old 87's fine. Um, it also has uh, an oil pressure sensor, so if the oil pressure is, is too low, it'll actually uh, trip a, an indicator on the display for you, so you know. So that's, that's new for this engine as well. But from a bottom end durability, we took a lot of the lessons of the Pro R, the two liter mill, and, and put them in here. So some of the lower end components, you know, main bearings, conrods, uh, the pistons are different. The bore sizing is the same, but the piston in itself has changed. This has got a little lower compression setup than what a Pro R does for that kind of more sporty application where you need to run premium fuel. Um, the other thing that's done different here is the cam grind is much more tailored to lower uh, RPM operation. So, you know, these cams are set up to kind of stay, you know, under 6,000 RPM, whereas razors are set up to be, you know, up to eight or even nine grand at times. Um, the other thing that's neat that you can see on the backside, I guess, speaking of cams here, we'll just keep spinning this, this stand around as I go. We got one wheel locked. Oh man, we got all kinds of things going on here. Um, so this is actually the cam face sensor on this. And if you look at the end of this camshaft, you'll see there's two big teeth and two little teeth. And the cool thing about that is it allows us to do stroke determination really quickly. You know, for the crank going around one time, once you've seen at least two of these teeth, you know exactly where it is, so you know which of the four strokes the engine's on. So we can start injecting fuel and, and turn it on spark and, and know whether we're on, you know, an intake, an exhaust, a compression, or a power stroke. So, you know, even simple stuff like that is, is been learned over time and, and applied to this particular engine. Uh, we've also taken our latest generation engine uh, controller technology and applied that here. So the torque modeling and, and some of the controls and, and calibrations are better as well, uh, as are the diagnostics. So because we've got, you know, that new steel drive transmission we talked about last time, there's a lot of interaction with how this engine behaves and how that transmission behaves. And we can control those things in unison a lot better now with the new control technology that, that the Ranger XD uh, 1500 has. And that is one of those other things that's carried over from you know, some of the models like the Pro-R. So a lot of the same technology, but really tuned for the specific Ranger use case, which is we want this thing to be durable. We want it to be really quiet in operation really good low end torque yep. uh, as well as as well as serviceability so yeah. some of those things that are really important in that utility setting are really yep. optimized on this powertrain mm -hmm. but the the core and the technologies that we're using are, are really similar across all of Polaris yeah and i think you know the last thing you mentioned there on serviceability like there's maybe one more point to note here so when you look at a lot of our other engines right we have an oil fill through the top of the valve cover well because we laid this one down if you dump oil in there it doesn't find an easy way to the crankcase um, so this one's pretty simple. The dipstick actually serves as the oil fill as well. And in the hash, the hash zone there, uh, you've got about three quarters of a quart of oil between the high and low. So, you know, as long as you're in the middle, you're okay, but you got quite a bit of oil from, you know, being full to getting down to being too low uh, in this as well. And the other nice thing, uh, when you're thinking about doing an oil change or taking it in, the oil filter is really easy. It's right next to the dipstick and it's got this little splash guard too. So when you spin this thing off, um, you don't have to worry about oil getting all over your engine. It hits there and drops right down out the bottom. So it makes it really easy uh, to be able to service and maintain this rig. And again, 2,000 mile, $200 intervals on the engine. So you don't have to do it very often. How about specs? How about horsepower, torque, you know, things like that? Yeah, so I think, you know, as you look at this, um, this thing is, is tailored to low speed operation. So although it's a, you know, liter and a half motor, it's targeted right at about 110 horsepower. Um, but when you think about the torque set, the torque spec on it, it's almost flat to that. So it's like 105 foot pounds of torque and it develops that really low in the rev band. So you don't have to wind it out to get there, which is what's really nice with the steel drive transmission on this XD1500. So as we talked about, this is the most capable UTV ever made and it's got the suspension and the wheels and tires to prove it. So as you can see, this vehicle is sitting on 32 inch tires, which is the maximum size that you can put on an XD1500. Look at these massive tires, Eric, huge. And then as you come around to the front, 
look at all this ground clearance that you get. So even from the factory, you're gonna get 15 inches of ground clearance with 30 inch tires. With these 32s, it's even higher. Also got 12 inches of suspension travel in those springs and shocks mounted on arch day arms, which combined with that super rigid, super stiff chassis, deliver the best ride and handling we've ever had in a Ranger. All right, so we ripped the front wheel off of this thing so we could show you guys a little more on what's going on inside and we scattered a few parts on the ground. Most of these are Ranger XD 1500, but we got a few old comparison parts as well and I'll talk through those in a bit. But the first thing you notice when you look at this, we've got this awesome five bolt pattern, right? And we've got a loose hub sitting here. So this is actually a front hub off this vehicle. So you can see built out of steel, spline interface, you know, this part rides into the bearings. Um, and we've actually got the steel knuckle here as well. So you can see, you know, dual bearing setup. You know, the hub basically slips right in there. The shaft goes through and that's what clamps that joint together. Um, this is actually on this side of the vehicle. You know, the tie rod interface is here. So that's how this thing steers. The other cool thing that you can see, um, you know, on this one, um, when you look at it, is that there's two flat spots on either side of this. And that's actually gonna be used as steering stops against the, uh, the lower control arm. So if you, if you sneak back a little, you'll see these two ears right here. Those things will touch off on these two points. And what that allows us to do is get a huge cut angle without worrying about blowing the uh, joints of the half shaft out when you get to extreme steering angles and, and big suspension travel. The other thing you heard Chris talk about was this massive high clearance arm. So this is the lower arm. You can see just how big that kink is. So we push that ground clearance all the way out to the, the wide point there. Um, and if you hold on to these arms, they are beefy. I mean, you guys maybe can't tell this in the picture, but um, these things are built pretty stout. Uh, they're pretty impressive. The other cool thing is we actually got sealed suspension bushings on these and I'll show you, I popped one out on the rear. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, we've also got a front shaft loose here. Again, we beefed up the bar size. The joints and splines are a little bit bigger on this XD1500. Um, for anybody that's ever had one of these out, you can see just how huge these splines are compared to what we've had in the past. So we're gonna jump back to the rest of the pile of parts here that we've got going on. And this half shaft one is <laughs> kind of an awesome one to tell. Um, so in my left hand, you're right, we've got the Ranger XP1000. And in my right hand, you're left, we've got the XD1500. And I think you can see just how much beefier this thing is. Bar is huge, joints are bigger, you know, splines are all, everything you'd want. I mean, overall, you can see way, way bigger. The other cool thing going on in the back here <coughs> is we've got, you know, an XP1000 here. So kind of separate hub, much like you've seen on the front where the hub and uh, bearings are separate. Well, on this new setup, we've got the unitized hub and this is the same part uh, that you've seen on the uh, Pro R and the Turbo R. So if you ever have to replace a bearing here, you just pull these four bolts, this whole assembly pops off, you put a new one on and you're done. Makes it way easier to deal with from a service side. Um, I talked about these sealed suspension bushings. So in here, you can actually see the bushing that that bolt goes through and rotates. And we've got a nice O-ring seal that sits on all of these. So you don't have to worry about adding grease ever. You notice there's no zerk on these arms. So it makes the service life much longer and the maintenance much lower for you. All right, so we talked about the hub up here. Another cool thing is on these brakes. So although the caliper looks pretty similar to what you're used to seeing in a wheel end, we've actually got a vacuum assist uh, brake boost technology on this for the first time on a Polaris uh, Ranger ever. And that's gonna give you really consistent brake force as an operator. So no matter whether you got this thing empty like it comes from the factory or fully loaded with a trailer, the brakes are always gonna be there for you because we've got that uh, vacuum uh, brake booster out there. Um, you also see we've got huge springs, big shocks, you know, everything's been beefed up in this front end. The other cool thing about the suspension geometry on this is that as this wheel goes up and down, the camber stays pretty true. So instead of having a wheel that's tipping as it goes up and down, it stays quite flat. So it gives you really nice handling uh, and control when you're going around the corners or even just going through some chatter bumps or bigger whoops. Overall, when you think about the performance of this front end and the suspension overall, this machine is a monster. It's fantastic. All right, Chris, I might've gotten a little sweaty hefting all those parts around a minute ago here. So it's kind of nice to take a load off on this tailgate. But the thing that's awesome is this thing's rated for 500 pounds. 
Yep, so not only is it a very capable dump box, but the tailgate is fully supportive of taking a load off after you've done some hard work. So 500 pound capacity. Also got some molded in cup holders, so you got a spot to put your beverage while you're hanging out. Yeah, there's some other trick features here too, right? We got some slots that you can drop some pencils in if you're doing some work. We even got a built-in ruler here. You can see the inch and centimeter marks. And I think one of the coolest is this electrical outlet right here in the back. Um, so you got 12 volts that you can actually switch from the cockpit. So there's a switch up on the dash. So you can control this right from the driver's seat. So if you got you know, a sprayer or something else that you need to power up, uh, you got an easy spot to hook that up right here in the back of the box. Other cool feature that you missed over there, Pat, is if you look right under that tailgate latch, that little slot, can you guess what that is? Uh, if I had to take a guess, I'm thinking if I'm uh, eating a burrito and having a Mexican Coke, that's where I'm gonna open that bottle up. You are correct, sir. So we've got some bottle openers. There's a bunch of cool hidden features around this vehicle, but that's one of the ones we snuck in is bottle openers in the tailgate. That thing just feels solid. One of my favorite features of this new cargo box is the latching and the tailgate are fit for a three quarter ton box. It feels great. Every time you shut the box, it's just robust, it's solid. It's a really nice tailgate and makes me happy every time I use it. Yeah. The other thing that's really cool that we launched on the Polaris Expedition is the Lock and Ride Max accessory system. So it's all new for Ranger, but very similar to what we launched on the Polaris Expedition. It's a completely customizable, completely modular accessory system. We've got this one built out with a full 3D system with this added rack, but really customizable for what you're doing, what accessories you wanna carry with you. You can put these accessories anywhere you want. Um, and there's a lot of different attachment styles. So really a lot more customizability that's possible with this new lock and ride system. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing we gotta show these guys quick is what it looks like, uh, how easy it is to tilt the box on this North Star. Yeah, hop in and show them, Pat. I don't even need to hop in. I can reach right through the window. <laughs> so I think the thing that I love about this the most is that there's a, a nice electronic actuator here in the back. So you got this huge shock rod uh, that's you know coming out, uh, tilts the box up, got nice heat shielding around the base so you don't have to worry about all that exhaust heat. Overall, this makes jobs, you know, when you've got this back end loaded up with gravel or, you know, mulch or whatever you're doing, way easier. Um, so I think with that, I'll come back around to your guys' side. But Chris, I think there's one other spec that we haven't mentioned when we think about capability on this, this XD1500. And that's fuel tank capacity, right? Because this thing can go a long way on one take of gas, right? I think we hold, what, 13 and a half, 13.6 gallons, somewhere in that, that neighborhood? Yep, it's just over 13 and a half gallons, which is a little bit bigger than the fuel tank on other Ranger models. That combined with some of the efficiency that you get from this controlled steel drive transmission means that you get a pretty solid tank of gas out of one of these vehicles. It's obviously gonna depend how you drive it, um, but you can get up to 200 miles if you're being pretty easy on that accelerator. Um, probably less than 150 if you're Pat doing his thing out on the trails. Um, but the goal there was to make the fuel tank a little bit bigger so that you've got a solid day's range um, out of this vehicle. Yeah, it's fantastic. So I think, Chris, we better wrap this episode up where we're talking all about capability, right? We did the deep dive on the engine. We talked about the suspension. We went through the front end, went through you know the interior, the lighting, the back end, the box, the accessories. I mean, overall, this Ranger XD 1500, phenomenal unit. You guys are gonna to wanna to tune back in next time where we dive deep on comfort on this rig, but for now, be sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you wanna see next time. <laughs>